only 30 minutes from Niagara to downtown Toronto, across the lake, no traffic, no QEW stress, and no congestion. I already know what you're thinking. It sounds way too good to be true. Now, in case you haven't heard yet, there's a major infrastructure project on the go right here in Niagara that could completely change how we live, work, and invest here. And that's called Hoverlink. If this project gets the green light, this could be a complete game changer on how we travel to and from Toronto. But before we get into the video, guys, welcome back to my channel. Or if we haven't met before, my name is Andrew Kulikowski, and I'm a local real estate agent and team leader of Living in Niagara Real Estate Group at EXP Realty. My team helps hundreds of people just like you buy and sell real estate here in the Niagara area, and we absolutely love it. We love to hear from you and figure out how we can help you with your relocation plans. You guys are always welcome to call, text, DM, or our favorite, schedule a Zoom call with me, and we can sit down and figure out how we can help you with those future plans. Now, getting back to the video, I'm sure you're wondering, what is Hoverlink? Now, Hoverlink is a proposed high-speed passenger hovercraft service that would connect Port Weller in North St. Catharines to the Toronto Harbor, just steps from Billy Bishop Airport. Now, this service aims to operate year-round with up to 48 trips per day, carrying up to 180 passengers per craft. Now, pricing hasn't been set yet. However, they do estimate that a round trip is going to cost about $60. Really not bad when you think about parking in the city in downtown Toronto is gonna cost you on average anywhere from 25 to at least $30. And then incorporating the time, the stress, and of course, the cost of gas that it's going to cost you driving to and from the Niagara region. Now, a hovercraft is a unique vehicle that travels above the surface on a cushion of air. It doesn't float in the water like a boat or drive on the road like a bus. It literally hovers using powerful fans to lift the craft above land and water. So this means that it can glide over water, ice, and land, making it ideal for all weather travel even in conditions that would shut down a ferry or road system. Now, it's incredibly flexible and it's fast, and it has been used reliably in both military and commercial settings around the world. Now, what are the key features that make Hoverlink so unique? I've touched on that a little bit, but clearly the 30-minute travel time between Niagara and Toronto is, in my opinion, a game changer. Carrying up to 180 passengers per trip is also very impressive. They're designed to reduce emissions and take up to 8,000 cars off the QEW daily if this is a go. And then lastly is that these are supposed to be very comfortable means of transportation with climate controlled interior cabins for all around use. So Hoverlink claims this is not just a novelty, this is a serious transportation solution that could redefine regional connectivity. And let's talk about why this matters and why it's much more than just a convenient means of transportation. Number one is the real estate and migration trends. If this becomes a reality, the perceived distance between Toronto and Niagara will drastically shrink. This could increase buyer interest here, particularly from people who are priced out of the GTA but want a more affordable, spacious, and laid back lifestyle that Niagara offers. With a 30 minute commute, living in Niagara while working in Toronto becomes a real option now. You could also expect increased demand for homes in St. Catharines, Niagara Lake, Niagara Falls, and of course, all the other surrounding areas here in the Niagara region, especially near Port Weller and the major transit routes. The second thing is in theory, it should expand job market access. It's not just Toronto buyers coming this way. Now Niagara residents could access higher paying Toronto jobs without moving out of the region. This makes Niagara more attractive to skilled professionals. It helps retain local talent and potentially raises household incomes across the board. Now it's also going to boost tourism and small business activity. Hoverlink makes it easier than ever for to visit Niagara for a quick day trip a weekend getaway or even a dinner at a local winery. This means more foot traffic, more tourism dollars, and new customers for local businesses across hospitality, retail, 
and the service industries that we have here in Niagara. And the fourth thing is the infrastructure and investment growth. Now, projects like this attract attention, clearly, and investment. Now, if Hoverlink moves ahead with this, we could see a spinoff of development like hotels, restaurants, and short-term rentals, and increase municipal focus on enhancing the Port Weller area. It also opens up a new public-private partnerships and real estate opportunities tied to that waterfront. And then lastly, the environmental and traffic benefits are significant. And removing thousands of cars from the QEW daily, this is a game changer. That's a win for everyone. Less traffic, fewer emissions, and less wear and tear on our roads. It also supports a greener, more sustainable future without sacrificing the accessibility. Now, where do things stand now with Hoverlink? As of right now, Hoverlink has secured a 30-year lease at the Toronto Terminal, and it's working through its final approvals and environmental assessments to the Niagara side. Now, there's a strong interest with a lot of engineering behind this proposal, and a lot of momentum is building right now. This is no longer just a concept. It's a project that's actively moving forward. Now, just a reminder, there have been similar attempts to efficient means of transportation here in Niagara that have happened in the past, with the most recent being Fly GTA. Now, Fly GTA officially shut down, unfortunately, at short haul flights in 2022 between Niagara -the Lake and Toronto, citing skyrocketing fuel costs, a shortage of pilots and staff, and an end of government support. Fortunately, offering sub $100 flights and an 11 minute travel time, the airline said that it would now need to charge upwards of three to $400 per trip just to stay viable. But the golden question is, what are your thoughts? Do you think this is a really good idea? Do you think this is something that's actually going to fly? And would you use the service if it costs around $60 a trip? Let me know in the comments below. But that's all for now, guys. We hope you enjoyed the video today. Make sure to like, subscribe, tap that notification bell, and I will see all of you on our next video.